Security Breach brought with it a few eye-catching characters. Some like Roxanne Wolf and Vanny gaining fan bases immediately. Others like Glamrock Freddy becoming beloved after the fact. Yet one character who gained an unexpected boom in popularity was the most unexpected. The daycare attendant. Or the sun and the moon. A double act consisting of a nervous and overbearing sun and a sinister and sneaky moon won over the fanbase pretty quickly. And this scrunkly duo became beloved relatively overnight, overshadowing even main characters. Something that might have come as a shock as the pair pretty much had no merch upon release and only recently started getting even the most basic of products even though they have secured a big enough fan following that they have pretty much formed their own daycare-centric AU that only barely has anything to do with FNAF. They're that popular. So much fan fiction, so much fan art. And in comparison to their relative basic interest before, it's staggering. But there is something dark hiding about the sun and moon, something perhaps lost to time and cut, or perhaps something that has yet to come about. It is that which we will be looking at today. But before we go into that, let's cover the basics of the sun and the moon and how they function in Security Breach. As I said before, the daycare attendant is the attendant of the Superstar Daycare. He is assigned to the play area and is supposed to watch over and entertain the children who are dropped off there. We don't get to see them in action, but there's at least one note that suggests that the children are afraid of him. Or at least, afraid of his moon counterpart. Something that has been bleeding into bedtimes at home. Indeed, we can see some of the daycare attendants' off-putting behaviors in action. Sun is over-eager, over-fixated, and crowds his wards. Such as when Gregory arrives in the daycare and the sun all but confines him to a small space in the center of the daycare, circling around him and stopping him from leaving listing off games to play and things to do while issuing a warning against turning the lights off and rousing his other half. You can see why the sun might make a small child scared, and he is rather uncanny with his unmoving face being shoved into yours. However, sun is not outwardly aggressive, save his firm warning. He's just clingy and smothering, but we don't get any hints that he is dangerous himself. In fact, we might get one very small hint that the children actually like Sun. If you look very closely at his model, the Sun actually has children's handprints all over his back. This could be from when he picks them up and carries them around, but this also could show that he's actively playing with the children. Now, Moon is much more threatening. Leveraging out punishments, and the threat of punishments, and outright chasing Gregory through the play structures while twisting up his body to fit through. Even Sun seems disturbed by the moon, as when the lights go out, he's thrown into a panic. This could always be an act, but there's nothing to suggest this. After getting the lights back on, Sun throws Gregory out of the daycare, and Moon continues to pursue him at the hourly recharges when the lights go out. Shortly afterwards, Moon kidnaps Freddy, who passes out in the basement and then he disappears. No joke, but after two major story moments, Sun and Moon just disappear from the story. They aren't disassembled, they don't appear in the endings, they don't even appear when Gregory has to return to the daycare for the Mazer size key. This is likely due to the multitude of cut content. Let me quickly cover the confirmed cut content of the daycare attendant. I have covered this in other videos, so if you've already seen this, then feel free to jump to the next chapter. First are the pair of lines from Sun and Moon, where they both say, I'm putting you in timeout. I'm putting you in timeout! I'm putting you in timeout. In a few minutes, I will go over the possible changed mechanics of the Sun and the Moon, and that will explain where I think this line may have come from. There are quite a few Moon animations that were cut that you can find on YouTube. I have discussed them before, but they consist of a running Moon animation, Moon beckoning around a left and right corner, Moon getting jerked to the left and right by his cable, and Moon climbing from the wall to the floor on both the left and the right. These were likely gameplay animations, explaining why they are mirrored. In the February trailer, we also see Sun hop up and his points pop out, something that does not happen in the game. There are a few unused songs where you can quite audibly hear the daycare attendant's noises in the background. The most notable example being Sleep No More, a remix of Sleep No More from Ultimate Custom Night. Except, you can hear the click and the tick and the whir of the daycare attendant's body. Notably, these noises are a lot more audible when being pursued by the moon. 
I also think that Sun and Moon's presence dropping off unexpectedly, mi mixing with the unfinished state of the later game in and of itself, kind of hints that there was more cut content, but there is one more notable thing. So, in the Vanny ending, both disassembled and redeemed, Freddy is taken apart by staff bots, during which he gives this scream. It sounds very much like a sun scream. You might think that this makes sense because the two have the same voice actor, except for one problem. So, Freddy did have a voice line recorded from when he was disassembled originally, not by the staff bots, but by his bandmates. Gregory, run! Do not look back! Do not watch! Chica, Roxy, Monty, do not listen! Resist her! Please, you do not want to do this. No, stop. No, please. Here is Freddy's scream when he's pulled apart. <laughs> that sounds everything like Freddy and nothing like the sun. Here's Freddy's scream. Here's the sun's. Here's Freddy's scream. So what I think happened is that this is a sunscreen, and that it was either a placeholder or a mistake because they couldn't use Freddy's other scream because it was more of a beaten up scream than a torn apart screen. But how this slipped past development is questionable. But the real mystery is where did this scream originally come from? It could have been a second sun transformation take or something like that, but it could have also been from a cut scene later in the game. We don't and probably won't ever know. Now, let's go into the sun and moon's possible changed mechanics. Like with the cut content, I have covered these before, so feel free to skip ahead if you remember all this, but I will keep it brief. In the February trailer, if you move the clips of the daycare around into their proper order, you can see a sun and moon that work rather differently. For starters, the clock in the daycare runs constantly, and there's a few glimpses where you can just barely see the bits of transition from day to night and night to day. Moon is chasing Gregory down a slide before another clip shows Sun hopping up with his points coming out, with the lights on. Judging on the distance and movement, what seems to happen is Moon is chasing Gregory, the lights come on, and he pops into the sun. It seems like this was the original plan for the daycare where the sun and moon would chase you in tandem. Sun's safe, moon is not, and the clock is always ticking. If it wasn't obvious enough, sun himself is constantly ticking. It's safe to say that when Security Breach had to be rushed for their Christmas release, they didn't have enough time to work out this semi-complicated system and had to go with the simpler final mechanics. All things considered, I think it did work out in the end. Now, the reason I'm recovering all of this is so I can get into the actual topic of today's video, it's not just the sun, and not just the moon, but also the eclipse. If you've been around the FNAF fandom recently, you probably have become acquainted with the fandom's version of the eclipse. A fusion of sun and moon, frequently suggested to be a security protocol, bigger and badder than ever. And in a way that may be partially right, but the truth about eclipse is much more unclear, as his only appearance is hinted in a minigame hidden deep in Security Breach. One that must have been important as it is one of the few that made it into the game. To get this minigame, you have to solve the riddle of getting into the daycare attendant's rancid back room. There's a poster on the door, take pictures of the characters on it, which are hidden throughout the pizzaplex, and get inside, and then find an arcade machine tucked in a tiny secluded room. The difficulty to find this secret on one's own seems to allude to some form of importance. As it is, this is the hardest secret to acquire in the game. Not really difficult once you know what to do, but it involves a lot of running around and getting to a lot of different locations. Anyway, on to the Balloon World minigame. So, Balloon World works a lot like a knockoff Flappy Bird, except a little more forgiving. You play as Balloon Boy soaring through the sky while the sun smiles overhead, turning into the moon and back. Notably, once the sun turns into the moon, he carries his nasty grin even back in his sunny form. 
The secret hidden in this game can be found if you manage to snare a glitch. You go into a distorted world where the sun is replaced by his eclipsed form, and you must follow along a purple trail until you reach the end. This is our only glimpse of the eclipse, but his design gives us some clues to what he is. Eclipse's rays spin counterclockwise, unlike the sun's that spin clockwise. Unlike the sun's white eyes, you can see dull pupils glowing through, just like moons. The points are still out and the edges are alit, but a majority of his face has been darkened out and backlit by a glow creeping through his teeth and spilling out through the eyes. You can't see it well in this picture, but Eclipse's eyes flicker. At first, I thought it looked a lot like fire behind his eyes, maybe burning or overheating, but a friend of mine pointed out that this may look more like broken or malfunctioning LEDs, which would make a little more sense. In case you didn't know, the sun and moon actually do glow. The textures, or emission, is turned down by default in Security Breach, but you can turn their brightness up with certain mods, revealing their natural glow. These are the emission textures. Now then, what looks to be happening here is that either some lighting has either gone out in the face, or something else is conflicting with it. It's unclear in this basic image, but what is clear is that something has gone wrong. And that is why I think the eclipse is the shattered sun. And not just the shattered sun, but a sun so broken that now the moon is permanently in control, to the point where no amount of light will flip him back. It all comes from the name, Eclipse. The moon is quite literally blotting out the sun. Now able to venture seamlessly into the light and dark without any way to stop him, with even Freddy not being a safe hiding spot. This might have been hinted in the song Forever and Ever, the song featured in the Security Breach teasers. We're jumping in a rock until the sun goes down, and the moon is shining forever and ever. That is quite literally what happens here. The docile sun is gone and the moon's in control. For example, imagine if Gregory's trying to take out the threat of the moon and just ends up taking out the sun leaving him broken to the point where the moon is just constantly there. All the shattered animatronics are more dangerous after their accidents. This is the most obvious way that the daycare attendant could become more dangerous, by taking out the safety of the light, of the sun. My current theory is that there was a cut shattering segment right after Moon kidnaps Freddy, and Gregory travels through the heavily moon-themed basement segment with the Endos. That somehow Gregory shatters the daycare attendant, gets their battery or power pack, and uses it on Freddy. Explaining how he suddenly upgrades him with a new part and parts in service. It's not just already there. This lack of power possibly explains why the face is darkened. Maybe they're on a power saver mode, and why it can't flip back to the sun, if he's even still in there. This gives Gregory the idea to break the other bots to upgrade Freddy, and it would all make sense. In fact, that fixes the only issue with this theoretical gameplay slice. If the daycare attendant is broken, and the moon is constantly out, what stops him from dogging Gregory constantly through the entire pizzaplex? The fact that he can no longer hold a charge. Either he's on a meter like Vanny, or he only appears in specific locations, but he's underpowered and possibly overheating. He ain't running for long. It's hard to piece together what might have been using an unfinished puzzle and a tiny picture on the side of the box. But this is what comes to mind when analyzing closely. But unlike some of the other cut content, Shattered Freddy, Vanessa and Vanny's plot relevance, the second half of the Afton boss fight, the eclipse might be coming. So I don't like to speculate on future titles too much, but let's look into what we do know. We know Ruin is coming out sometime this year, or maybe next if they decide to postpone that it features Chica and an unknown red-eyed second who, from the spacing and shape, is either the daycare attendant or the blob. We know Ruin is supposed to be like the sewer and daycare, but there's not a clarification on in what way. We do know that likely fan perception of Security Breach will affect this DLC, so Sun and Moon's popularity might have given them a better chance of getting in. We know we're getting a line of circus and clown-themed Freddy characters, they are very well detailed and specific, not sharing molds or anything else. There's also a line of BBS characters. This could fit very well with the whole Balloon World teaser. If I was to take a guess on how these characters could be in this game, 
I would level to guess maybe our character doesn't start out in the destroyed pizza plex. Maybe they start out in a circus. Okay, so just throwing this off the top of my head, but imagine if the Ruined DLC starts at like a Freddy themed circus and there's this girl wandering around and she's looking at the circus stuff and like the new characters, the cartoons of the new characters pasted on the wall and then she just falls through the floor and then she's in the Ruined Pizza Plex because Fazbear Entertainment once again just built their newest attraction on top of their old one. I don't think that's how it's gonna go, but I can't say that it's the furthest reaching plot point. But who knows, I can't say anything for sure. What I can say for sure is this is what I think the Eclipse might be, and I do think, like I said before, with the recent increase in Sun and Moon merch and the popularity, I do think there is a strong possibility that the two could maybe come back. So, cut and dry, possible cut content, we're not sure, but a clean case, right? Well, not quite. See, okay, so while I was re-watching footage of the Bloom World minigame, it sort of very suddenly dawned on me that there's something very wrong with the daycare attendant that likely others have noticed, but I hadn't, and if I had, I would have probably been trying my hardest to ignore it. See, that is the very obvious hints that the sun and moon, or perhaps just moon, is possessed directly by Afton. And I don't just mean under the control of Annie, I mean something much worse. Let's start with the smallest hint, being the second bed in the room outside of Afton's office. Obviously, from the Vanny face on the wall, this is likely Vanny's other bed. But it's notable that the blanket is blue with yellow stars, much like Moon's pants. A minor thing, really. Coincidence. It's also very odd that there's a charging station right there, even though Afton has his own private charging station. But that could just be a setup for the boss fight. Moon's cut beckoning animation is almost identical to Glitch Traps. I mean, the beckon with his hand before slowly sliding out of view. There's different quirks, yes, but, but there is an immediate similarity between the two. Now, that minigame. Let's look at it a little closer. You go into the glitch and follow a trail that slowly becomes more and more purple until arriving directly at the Eclipse Sun, at which point you get the words, good night, a phrase Moon frequently says, in purple, the color of the devil himself. You might think that this is being overthought, but when taken into consideration the fact that this minigame is so hidden away and the weird state of the daycare attendant in the game, it becomes less of a tidbit and more of a red flag, or a purple one. There is something else as well. Throughout the Pizzaplex, you can find these rooms where there are hung up and destroyed staff bots. Now, it is believed that these rooms belong to Vanny or Vanessa and that she's been destroying these staff bots. But the fact that the daycare attendant's own room that he's shown leaving is in the same exact state with the same destroyed staff bot makes this very suspicious and could point to him being behind these rooms especially since many of the staff bots are destroyed in such a barbaric manner. So let me go off topic for a second. Sort of. Fazbear Frights are funny books. While so many of them and Tales of the Pizzaplex have goofy stories completely unrelated entirely with FNAF, they occasionally have themes that repeat. Themes like a character talking through a doll to their child, people becoming possessed or seeing things in VR, faces getting detached, body snatching, and there was a well-known storyline about two characters sharing a body, one friendly and protective, one aggressive and defensive, and how they unknowingly had a third hijacker amongst them who was using them to kill others, feeding off of them, flourishing and waiting for the right moment to appear. That story is the overarching story of the Fazbear Frights epilogues, a book series written and published at the same time Security Breach was. The body was the Stitch Wraith, and the hijacker was Afton. And no, I'm not saying the daycare attendant is the Stitch Wraith. Even though the Stitch Wraith did end its life in a haunted ball pit where Jake, the nice one, proceeded to protect and give happy memories to the other children, which in hindsight, as I'm writing this, does seem super ironic. But all I'm saying is, yes, Moon might just be legit evil. Moon might really be Afton and invading and infecting Sun and 
and just hasn't reached the other personality. But this idea of being invaded by a parasite could be real. And that being said, the idea of the sun and moon being the next step in Afton's big scheme, well, I think... I think I hate it. In fact, the idea of the daycare attendant, a character I really latched onto, being another embodiment of Afton, yeah, I hate it. Like, I really, really hate it. So, don't assume my introduction to this idea is me vying for it. No, I legit do think it would be horrible. Especially if FNAF leaned into this because of the popularity of said daycare attendant. Obviously, not all of it would be because of that, since there were hints in there since launch, but I don't think doubling down would be a good idea. Because, I've gotta be frank here, I feel there's a pretty good amount of evidence showing that Sun and Moon could be influenced by Afton beyond the Vanny virus, and I feel like if you went that route, I think it would be a nobody liked that situation. And I don't foresee the many, many fans of the scrunkly Sun and Moon really latching onto the idea of their fan favorite just becoming another suit for Afton to squeeze into. Because don't get me wrong, Sun and Moon can be off-putting and threatening, but obviously that's not what has made them so beloved. It's some sort of mix of Ronald McDonald energy and liminal space vibes, mixed with the childhood we always hunger for and the adult anxiety that creeps through the cracks in Sun's plating, and the utter menace of some night-themed jester bouncing around and giggling like a gremlin. You struck gold here. And it's not just a me thing this time. A lot of people really love these clowns. Now, I do feel like Eclipse is doable. I kind of feel like that's the best of both worlds, admittedly. Both a very creepy sideshow, a great setup for a memorable gameplay, and won't derail the characters for those who love them as they are. The shattered animatronics didn't turn fans off at Chica Monty or Roxanne, and Eclipse could be really cool. Just, let's like, I don't know, not involve Afton, please? I say, knowing that whatever decision is long done and over with. Ah well, at least I spoke my piece. So, I hope that maybe I opened your eyes to the Eclipse, or, well, the short cameo of what might be the Eclipse and my thoughts on what it might actually be, since it's such a popular character in the fandom space. Giving more details around with the origin might cue more people in, and then if the character does appear later on, more people will be like, aha, there he is, that guy. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you've discovered something new. Thank you for watching.